All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm going to be showing you how to measure the resonance frequency of an LC circuit, such as a home-built Tesla coil secondary coil. So without much ado, let's begin. Over here, I've got the output of an internal one kilohertz five volt square wave from my oscilloscope connected to the channel one of the, my oscilloscope. So as can be seen, it's working just fine and there's a 50% duty cycle. And the frequency is one kilohertz exactly. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to either use the internal pulse generator or a home-built pulse generator as I'm going to be doing. My circuit is based around a 555 timer and it's producing like a 1.7 kilohertz square wave. So what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to connect our test LC tank circuit such as the secondary coil to the output of the square wave generator. Upon achieving this there should be some ringing over here which will be at the resonance frequency of the coil and you'll have a nice like um, exponential asympt asymptotic exponential like envelope pattern over here and I'll go something like this. So without much ado let's start. So let's disconnect the oscilloscope from our internal uh, pulse generator let's connect it to my home built pulse generator. So ground to ground let's connect this all right, ground to ground connected, check. And let's connect the output to the input of my oscilloscope. And if everything is done correctly, you should be seeing a nice square wave appearing right about now somewhere. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. So very important, kids. Check your connections, and if anything doesn't work, first rule, check connections and voltages. Speaking of which, we've got a mess over here, so let's raise the trigger to the ringing. And let's lower the wave just a little bit. So yeah, look at that beautiful asymptotic pattern. So let's zoom into here, and let's do single sequence. All right. Now, let's slide over the waveform so we can tell the frequency. So let's do horizontal and slide you over. So yeah, because of the memory depth, not all of the waveform is saved. And there is some slight truncation on the side. But that's not a problem, so let's just refresh it one more time. Hmm. For some reason, it's not outputting to the computer really well. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. So let's slide this down a little bit. Come on. Load. There we go. Let's raise this just a little bit. Alright. And let's see the frequency. So right now, the resonance frequency is 200 and like 207 kilohertz which is close enough to my calculated 208.3 kilohertz. So pretty good. Now, just to show you this is not bullshit or anything, and this is really true, I'm going to change the parasitic capacitance of this coil. How am I gonna do this, you ask? Pretty simple. I'm gonna bring my hand to the coil, and this should shift the frequency. Specifically, the frequency will shift down because I increased the capacitance. So let's give this a shot. And here's my hand. Oh yeah. So yeah, look at this. The pulses became longer and now the resonance frequency is like 160-ish kilohertz. So let's move my hand away. And now the resonance frequency is... Oh, there we go. 208 kilohertz. Really good. So yeah, as you can see, this method works and is quite reliable.